Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I fully understand how boring of a topic camera settings and maybe the exposure triangle can be. And you're probably thinking to yourself at this point, then why in the world is Mark giving a talk on a seemingly boring topic? And that's a very, very fair question. As I used to think the exact same way until I discovered a newfound love and appreciation for one very specific aspect of it. And based off of the title of this talk, you're probably already well aware of what that is. Now, I agree with you. ISO and aperture, not much to get excited about there, but shutter speed, on the other hand, is completely, or can completely change so many different aspects of your photography. But most importantly, it gives you the ability to, I guess, see the world in a way that's not possible for the human eye. And it's not something that, that our brains can even comprehend which is a testament in itself is our eyes and our brains, well, they're pretty powerful. And my hope is that over the course of the next uh, 15 minutes or so, you'll fall in love with this topic as much as I have, and you'll be able to, or you'll be inspired to embrace this little golden treasure. So to jump right into it, I think one of the things that's most exciting about shutter speed is, is how unique it is. And I really want to drive home how special shutter speed is. And I think the best way to understand this tonight, we just kind of touched upon this a minute ago about how, you know, how powerful the, the human brain is. You know, the, the, eye, the human eye is a very, very powerful thing. And I want to relate it real quick to cameras and to camera technology. So we're going to go through a real quick exercise that you can do at home. So wherever you are, wherever you're watching this video, just place your hand close to your face, not this close, you know, you don't want to be cross-eyed or anything like that, but to a, a, a comfortable viewing distance to where you can see all the details of your hand, you know, maybe your, your fingerprints or maybe the striations of your hand and just stare at it and look at the details of your hand. And at the same time, pay attention to the area surrounding your hand. And you'll notice that that area behind your hand is out of focus. So keep staring at your hand and you'll notice that the area surrounding your hand is a little bit out of focus. Now, if you drop your hand, what happens? Your eyes kind of reset a little bit and now you can see everything in the background of wherever you're doing this, ex this uh, experiment. So now everything in your room, everything in the background is completely in focus. And then if you bring your hand right back, you give your eyes a chance to reset. Now everything on your hand is perfectly in focus. And if you just kind of move your hand around a little bit while you're staring at your hand, the details of your hand, you'll notice that that area behind your hand is slightly out of focus. That's the same exact way that aperture works on our cameras. So that's pretty neat to see our, the human eye in aperture. There's a lot of similarities there. So I'm going to play a quick 20 second clip. This is actually a clip from uh, of me photographing a waterfall for my recent trip to Bali over in Indonesia last month. And this is by far the most beautiful waterfall I have ever laid eyes on. Now, when you spend the next 20 seconds watching this clip, I just want you to pay attention to how the water is falling. And if you want to try, you can uh, try and um, maybe stop the motion of the water, or perhaps slow down the motion of the water with your eyes. Of course, we're not going to be able to do that. But I really want you to just pay attention to how the water is falling. So I'm going to go ahead and play that right now. But as you watch that short clip, of course you weren't able to slow down that water falling. Of course you weren't able to you know, completely stop time there. But I think you can kind of see where I'm going at here. The human eye can't do anything close to what shutter speed can do. You know, the human eye can do what aperture can do, but we cannot see the way shutter speed operates in our camera. We can't slow down time. We can't stop time. I mean, people have spent their entire lives looking for the fountain of youth, and it's not because they're thirsty. It's because they want to try and figure out a way to stop time or a way to slow down time, which we cannot do. So I really hope that kind of drives home the fact that Shutter speed is so, so unique. What it, the, the, the effect that it creates is something that the, the powerful human brain and the powerful human eyes cannot comprehend and cannot see. And that's super, super exciting. And that's one of the things that gets me most jazzed up is because shutter speed, it's like a time machine. It gives us the ability to stop time. It gives us the ability to slow down time. And I think that's really, really cool. So I'm gonna show you a couple quick examples here. Now, one of the things that I think is so cool about shutter speed is that you can use different shutter speeds to help better tell a story of a particular location, of a particular photograph. Because different shutter speeds create 
a different, or I should say, elicit a different feeling in the viewer. And I'll show you what I mean right here. So I'm going to show you two photographs. These aren't incredible photographs by any stretch of the imagination, but they really drive home this point. So when you're looking at this photograph, these photographs, I'll only show them for maybe 10 seconds a piece, but really just kind of tap into the emotional side of your brain. Watch the water or look at the water falling. Look at where the, the water is meeting the ground or meeting the, the water beneath the waterfall. And just really pay attention to that and tap into the, 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 any kind of feeling that you might, or, you know, I guess a, a emotional response, if you will. So any type of feeling that comes up when you're looking at these photographs. So here's the first one right here. And here's the second one. Now, of course, both of those photographs were taken with this slower shutter speed. And as you were kind of examining those photographs, you might have felt a feeling of calm or a feeling of peace, perhaps. Now I'm gonna show you these exact same photographs, the exact same compositions taken, just these photographs were taken seconds later, but with a much faster shutter speed. And go through the same exercise. I'll show them on the screen, 10 seconds a piece, tap into the emotional side of your brain and just see what types of emotions come up. Here we go. And here's the next one. So now a common feeling that a viewer typically has when they look at a photograph that is taken of, of moving water that is taken with a faster shutter speed is it energetic a little bit, maybe a little bit loud, a forceful, a dynamic type of a photograph. And what's so wild to me is that same compositions, same types of photographs, the only thing that's different is shutter speed, but the feelings that those photographs can convey are so far opposite you know, calm and quiet, loud and energetic, they could not be on opposite sides of the spectrum. And the only thing that changed was just a small little adjustment on your camera. And to me, that is super cool. Now, this is, this is, a, this is actually the water, or this, <laughs> this is the final photograph of the, um, of, I, of the image that I was photographing in that video clip. I love the way it came out, but as you can see, this was captured with a much slower shutter speed. And this creates that very calm, very quiet feeling. You know, when I was on location here, that's exactly what I felt. I felt a, a, a sense of calm, a sense of peace. There was nothing chaotic or anything. I was, I was at this waterfall completely alone and it was just a very peaceful uh, time. And that's exactly what I wanted to convey. I didn't want to convey this image being as powerful, energetic, forceful type of a scene. I wanted it to be a very uh, kind of chilled out um, photograph for the viewer to look at. And I think that using this shutter speed definitely achieved that. Here's another example right here, a, a much longer shutter speed than I normally do, but I think that it definitely drove home the, uh, the fact that this is just a very calm and a very quiet type of an image. One from the, the Golden Gate Bridge, once again, a very, very long shutter speed, just letting these waves move in and out, just really kind of drives home that fact of just a very quiet and ethereal and just kind of a calm evening. And this right here, like you could never see this with your eye, like you would never be able to see these striations of water pulling away. So using these slower shutter speeds to help tell the story of what you might have felt when you're on location is a great way to just kind of drive home that fact of that or that elicit or, or elicit that response, emotional response in the viewer. This is actually the, this is not a, a great image at all, but it's a very old photograph, but it's the longest shutter speed I have ever taken or used or applied. I think it was right around two or three minutes, and I, I don't do a lot of extremely long shutter speed photography, but this is very, very long for me. But I like the way it came out. It's just, it's a very quiet and it's a very peaceful photograph. And I think that the shutter speed used really lended itself to that, uh, that emotional feeling. Now on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, we just went over slower shutter speed, creating that calm, that peaceful and ethereal feeling using a fast shutter speed is the totally the opposite thing. Powerful, energetic, uh, sometimes chaotic feeling. I think there's no better photograph that I have possibly than this one right here. This is a, a, a new image from, uh, from my trip to Indonesia. This is along the, the Nusa Penida coast. These just huge waves crashing in. And if you could just imagine what this would have looked like if I did, if I took this photograph with say a 10 second shutter speed or even just like a, a five second shutter speed or maybe a minute, this photo would have a completely different feeling. It would have a completely different meaning. And for me, when I look at this photograph, this photo has this kind of like a, a dual type of a feeling to it. You know, you have this man kind of looking at the ocean, the, the wave coming in, 
I, I envision he's kind of wondering to himself, you know, wow, that's a little bit bigger than I thought. Should I retreat? Should I go in any further? And then the wave is just building and building. And there's just a lot of energy in this photograph. And I think that shutter speed is what really did it all. Another great example from uh, Acadia National Park. This is it uh, out of Acadia uh, a couple years ago. There's huge waves crashing up through here. I've been in this location quite a few times and I've never seen it with such dynamic wave action here. But using that faster shutter speed, getting all these waves crashing up against this incredible coastline, even was able to get a little bit of spray popping up here as the sun was setting. And using that fast shutter speed to tell that story of that energetic and that forceful evening spent on this beautiful location. Yosemite Falls zoomed all the way in with a very long lens, just wanted to get the waterfall crashing down here with a fast shutter speed to really tell that story of how powerful this water was. You know, this was after a, a big snow melt and it was, Yosemite Falls was just absolutely raging on that day and or that week I was there. And I really wanted to tell that story and using that faster shutter speed definitely did that. So using these fast shutter speeds is absolutely monumental in certain situations. Now, of course, if there's nothing dynamic happening, like the sea is completely calm and there's no clouds in the sky and there's no wind at all, it might not be the best time to use a fast shutter speed. But in that scenario, you know, you're probably feeling a sense of peace and a sense of calm and a sense of relaxation or quiet. That'd be a good opportunity to use a slow shutter speed or maybe a very long shutter speed to really smooth out the sea or whatever, you know, is, I guess, creatively is kind of like sparking some type of uh, uh, interest on your mind. But if the key C is really, really kicking up, that's a great opportunity to use that fast shutter speed. And this is a good example from uh, Kauai from quite a few years ago. There's just so much wave action happening all through this image. And using that fast shutter speed to freeze that action, I really think lended itself well to this photograph. One more uh, example here. This is uh, Skogafoss in Iceland. And then I zoomed all the way in with a long lens and a super fast shutter speed to capture this right here. And I just love the, 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 the downward, I guess, just pressure this image feels like. I mean, I really wanted to show that grandiose nature of this waterfall. Almost that, you know, if you stood underneath this waterfall, it would completely crush you. I wanted to really show off that, that, that feeling of that. And I think that this image did just that power. Now, in between a fast and slow shutter speed is something that I call a blended shutter speed. And I think that naming convention is a little confusing sometimes. I don't mean take a fast shutter speed photograph and a slow shutter speed photograph and blend them together in Photoshop. What I mean by a blended shutter speed is a shutter speed that's not super fast, it's not super slow, it's something in the middle, and it's something that I absolutely love to do. It's the shutter speed I'm always going for. Now, a question I get rather often is what's the best shutter speed? And there is no answer. I should say there is no correct answer to that question because it's all dependent on the amount of flow of water. So. Um, a, a half second with a, a, a ton of water pouring over a waterfall is going to look totally different than a half second exposure with just a trickle of water pouring over a waterfall. So there's no way to answer what's the best shutter speed. But what I, what I like to go for is a shutter speed that shows motion and at the same time shows as much detail in the water as possible. So in order to show as much detail in moving water, you use a fast shutter speed that shows all the detail, but you lose all the motion. And the way to show the most motion in moving water is by using a slow shutter speed. That's gonna show all the motion, but then you're gonna lose all the detail. So I'm always trying to figure out, find that balancing act. How do I show as much motion as possible and as much detail as possible? And it's a, it's a little bit of a, a cat and mouse game, if you will. This is from my recent trip to the Lofoten Islands in Norway. And I think this is a, a really good example of this kind of blended shutter speed. Not super fast, not super slow. You can see that the water definitely is moving, but you're also getting a lot of detail in the water as well, which is really, really important. Uh, from a, a trip to Iceland a couple years ago, I just love all of the detail in here. And I think this is one of my favorite images of just moving water, I should say. I just love the, all of the motion in this water, but being able to retain all of that detail there. This is from out of Oregon uh, this last year, another amazing event. This you know blended shutter speed definitely shows all the details, showing all the motion, helps tell the story of the starfish just kind of clinging on to this uh, the coral, hanging on for dear life. And I think that the shutter speed used in this really kind of helped to tell that story. And this is one of my favorite waterfalls in North Carolina. This is another good example. You can obviously see that this water is not, whoops, is not uh, frozen. You can see the movement, but you can also see a ton of detail as well. 
from the Blue Ridge Mountain, uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, I'm from West Virginia from uh, actually quite a few autumns ago, but definitely just a ton of action, ton of, uh, of dynamic um, excitement, if you will, showing a lot of detail, showing a lot of motion, and then this one from Hawaii as well. But I really feel like you can kind of understand exactly where I'm going at with all of this because I think it's one of the most exciting things about shutter speed. One, so I think he's doing a pretty good job, but one thing that he uh, fails to do at this point is thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who he uses for all of his website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display your work using customizable galleries in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you'll need to start selling your physical, digital, or service products online immediately. You you can even use Squarespace's new asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from a single place in order to easily find and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Just to kind of briefly recap here, one, the human eye, the human brain, we can't see shutter speed at all. The only way we can see it is with our camera and that in itself is pretty awesome. Second part about it, it's a time machine. It gives us the ability to stop time or slow time down. We've been watching um, movies about time travel and time machines since we were little kids, Back to the Future. And this gives you the ability to do that. And I think that's super, super cool. And then on top of the fact that it not only can help you to take more visually appealing photographs, it can make your photos look better, but it can also help tell that story a little bit better as well. And I think that's just so, so exciting. There's so many creative possibilities with shutter speed. And there's so many ways to make your photos look better by using different shutter speeds. And I hope this short talk kind of helped to uh, inspire you a little bit. Maybe look at shutter speed in a way that you perhaps have never looked at it before. I, I hear a lot of times that when I talk about shutter speed, people are like, you're crazy. You're, you're acting like a complete nerd over this. Who thinks about it like that? And I do, and I think it's so exciting. So um, hopefully you, you, you didn't think about that. And hopefully this talk maybe kind of sparked a little bit of creativity or a little bit of inspiration in you.